I want to look at specifically the probability of volatility. I want to look specifically at the probability of a breakout or high level activity. Not necessarily the direction that comes afterwards. First, appreciate the volatility. Why? We'll say it, we'll discuss it in just a second. But one thing that is particularly appealing about uh, simply forecasting volatility rather than going all the way through the entire thing, including direction, including uh, stops and targets, including uh, the momentum that comes afterwards, is that it's actually much easier to benchmark the probability of a higher level volatility that can force a breakout or conditions of low volatility. Why? Because we know through general conditions and markets whether we have a consistent low level of volatility and a lack of actual momentum for uh, forcing volatility. We can also see, very importantly, catalysts, things that would actually jumpstart volatility. And if there are, is an absence of meaningful catalysts that can tap into individual currencies or currency pairs or broader markets as a whole, then we know that there is a lower, a much lower probability that you do have a breakout. Rather, we would look for a range setup. All right, so we can start first in that top-down approach, looking at let's say a euro USD and appreciating it for a possible range setup. Then we apply a range strategy, which in those types of market circumstances would be a better approach. It would have a material probability uh, skew in its favor. But looking at the Euro USD and using this as uh, certainly a great benchmark for what's coming up ahead, it's looking more like a possible breakout scenario because we have key event risk on the Euro side and of course uh, potentially uh, offering us follow through. On Friday we have US data. All right? This combination of catalysts tells us that there is a high probability of very volatile markets. Does not necessarily imply direction. We have to establish our fundamental forecast, what the market expectations are, what scenarios would actually uh, appeal or benefit uh, from certain outcomes uh, for the euro. But we know that there is a high probability, at the very least, of higher level activity. All right, and with that, we can adapt. We can make different trade strategies. We can look for, instead of range trades, breakout trades, and wait for either the uh, the high end of this, uh, up at 130, 3625 or below 135.25. We can look for a break from one of those levels with the proper volatility. All right? So knowing volatility and benchmarking volatility, we have a much higher probability scenario we have a better trading approach, and we in turn put ourselves on a much better track for the trade. All right? Euro USD is obviously a great one. You can look at other pairs like Euro Pound, which is kind of stuck between this congestion level. Is this trend line down here uh, support, or uh, or is this previous support acting as new resistance? Well, knowing that volatility is coming along, there's a good probability that we actually uh, complete this. We actually decide one way or the other which uh, break or which trend is going to develop. You can look at pairs like Euro Yen, similar situation, however I think that this is probably going to have a little bit better uh, influence or rea response to another volatility catalyst in Friday's uh, US payrolls because that's the kind of event risk that can tap into Yen crosses and general risk trends. Right? So we can isolate what volatility event to look for as well. That's a very important component of this analysis. Knowing that we also have, let's say, a Bank of England rate decision, which I'll talk a little bit more about in today's uh, trading video, but this actually has a very good probability of uh, generating volatility on its own, because while it does not necessarily have uh, an update when there is no change to monetary policy, any sign that the central bank is trying to back off from uh, the exorbitant rise in the pound because it has appreciated very aggressively offers us a, cha a very th a substantial threat that the pound can drop off aggressively. So while it is maybe a lower probability, knowing that that scenario is there with that event risk and knowing the volatility potential, we can pay attention to pairs like pound dollar. All right, and we can see how aggressively this pair has risen and how exposed the pound is. The upside might be capped, 
while the downside is exposed to greater level of volatility. Right? And there's also another uh, aspect to volatility that we've discussed on and off in the past, and that is that certain pairs or certain currencies appreciate the higher or lower levels of volatility, namely pairs like uh, the carry trades, like Euro-Yen, and really the Yen crosses in general, have even uh, further uh, leveraged their exposure to traditional risk trends, while carry trade has deviated somewhat. I think one of the more interesting ones, though, and something I've pointed out recently, is the U.S. dollar. All right. The U.S. dollar it does much better as a response to volatility. Interesting, because the past week, week and uh, two weeks, we've had some pretty tight congestion on this, and now we're looking for the possibility of a breakout. Will we get a breakout? Well, volatility has proven itself in the past to be one of the key catalysts for guiding the greenback due to uh, likely its uh, position as a reserve currency and obviously when volatility is increasing we use volatility as a measure of quote unquote fear or risk and people will naturally uh, trend towards a safe haven like the US dollar when they perceive a greater risk or greater fear in the FX market well as you can see here this is the FX volatility index you often get a leading signal from the volatility reading and that has been more so as of late. This rise here, the eventual top, uh, these swings have uh, come earlier on the volatility side than they have for the US dollar. We'll note that we've had a break higher here in the FX volatility index, and the US dollar has yet to make its move. It's not a guarantee, but using this relationship to simply volatility, the level of activity, rather than activity and direction, and the other aspects of the trade, we have a very simplistic approach that we can work from a foundation of better probabilities. All right? So appreciate volatility what it is. Uh, it can offer you a leg up when you're placing your trades, and it can help to really refine and simplify what you're looking at, sometimes even offering you a complete setup, or almost a complete setup, all on its own. All right? Well, uh, hopefully this helps you uh, with your FX trading. We'll do another FX strategy video tomorrow.